Hey everybody, welcome back. This is applying assert equal one for the testing section of module two. So read all of this, but essentially it's going to say that during the next four problems, we're going to be doing something slightly different than what we've done so far. And essentially, if we think about that clean code structure that we just went over, you're going to be building out that essentially. So for the most part, the run the test and I got it right is kind of over at this point. For the remainder of the problems, organizing the way that you output your code is going to be the name of the game. And also, you might need to debug the code under test if necessary. Now, if we look at this, to square n, return n times n, that's correct. So we won't actually need to debug this. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, take it over to Replit, and take notice that kind of this is what we're going to be building eventually, although not exactly. Copy that. Not copy that, just highlight all of it. So an assertion function be used. If the return value of a square function looks like it's just going to be a number. So in that case, we probably want to use assert equal. Now you could go back to the assert equal that we wrote and just copy and paste it. However, I would highly suggest that you don't do that. And the reason is, is that everything that you're doing is all about practice, about repetition, and about getting it to the point where when you're on the interview, you don't have to think too much about what you're up to. Except just, of course, to solve the problem. So we're going to take an actual, an expected, and a test name. And we're going to compare actual and expected using a strict equality operator. If they are equal, we can ostensibly say that our um, test passed. If not, our test did not pass. And we're going to need to tell ourselves about it. So failed. And then we think about what did we fail? We failed the test name. We're going to wrap that in these, um, what do you call it, square brackets going to tell ourselves that we expected, and let's go ahead and put in the quotes around it. We expected whatever our expected value is, and plus there's the end quote around the expected value, and like a comma, say but got, space, and another set of quotes that are going to go around the actual value, plus the actual, and then plus the closing quotes around actual. You may have at this point discovered the way to uh, template literals, which are more, not advanced, but they're just a newer feature. I'm going to avoid using template literals, but definitely feel free to. If you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. You can always concatenate strings like this. But as you notice when we write this out, it's not exactly the most easy thing to do. And the only reason that I did it so quickly is because I've done this and messed it up a bunch of times about where you put the quotes versus a single versus double and all that good stuff. So now to the good part, the test cases. I want to prove that this square function works. So I want to think about my test cases. Let's say we should try it with a positive integer. And we should go back and spell integer correctly. Maybe one with a negative integer. Maybe one with uh, input is 0. And then maybe one where the input is a decimal. Now, you want to be careful with decimals in JavaScript, because if you did the compound compute compound interest problem without checking any answers or without really, um, although to be honest, I changed the, the specifications for that to round off to four digits. So you might not have had any trouble with that. But if you did it before that, you'll notice that JavaScript is not super friendly with, the, with decimals. So if you get a problem with a decimal for your square function, don't really worry about it uh, over much. So the way that we organize these test cases is we're going to do two things. We're going to create an actual and an expected for each one of them. And then we're going to run a test. And we're going to create a test so that when we run this, it'll prove to us that it passes for all these tests. So for the positive integer case, let's create a positive integer actual. So we'll say actual 1 is equal to our function square. And we're going to pass in a positive integer. Then we're going to say expected 1. And that's going to be what we expect the result of squaring 3 to be, which I expect it to be 9. And then we're going to call our assert equal function. Assert equal is going to take a couple of parameters, which is to say a couple of arguments in this case. Parameters are the definition, arguments are when you're calling it. And actual expected one, and then the test name should be should square a positive integer. Now for negative integer, we're going to copy a lot of this. I would suggest, again, that you probably write this out yourself, but it's okay if you don't feel like it. Actual 2, expected 2, and should square a negative integer. And it might be kind of like, hey, why am I doing all of this? 
Eventually, what you're going to be getting better at is thinking about your code, thinking about all aspects that could occur in your code, and making sure that you have accounted for those. So this is what we're up to now. They call this categorical reasoning, which is to say, let's consider all of the categories that would need to work for a square function to be deployed, which is to say to be put out into production. So let's square a negative integer. We'll say negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to be 16, and should square a negative integer, so we're already good there. Now we're going to copy and paste all of this again. Actual 3 is going to be square called on 0. 0 times 0 has got to be 0, but we want to change this to be called 3. Same thing here, same thing here. Should square, uh, let's say an input of 0. Mm -hmm. And decimal. So this will be our last test, test case. Uh, to be sure, if all that you did was this, that's probably okay for now. However, we'd like to be a little bit verbose, so we're going to square a bunch of things. So this one's going to be 0.5, and I'm doing that just because I know that the result of that is 0 .0 0.25. This might be 4. Actual 4 is going to be the result of calling that. Expected 4 is going to be this. And should square a decimal input. Okay, so this was given to us. Based on the return value, we wrote an assertion function. It's going to allow us to test our uh, function. Then we wrote some test cases. And we organized our test case thinking around diff several different categories that could be applicable for testing a square function. So we'll clear the console output. And with this all in place, we're going to hit run. We get passed for all of them. So I'm going to grab all of this, take it back over to applying assert equal, paste it in. Let's run the tests. Cool. And as you can see, it's only only going to check to see if you have an assert equal function. That's it. Everything else is not really going to be under test. And I think it's not even really going to care if the assert equal function is correct. The idea here is that most of the work that you're doing is not really dependent on these tests. It's dependent on your reasoning about it over here in Replit or some kind of other code editor. To be sure, you can, you can do the same thing in here, but it's not going to be as much fun because we didn't get to see all those passes and everything like that. So. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.